Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's Mr. Nambani again. Uh, we are currently busy with projectile motion. Uh, we already have two videos that are up. Uh, the first one is gen general concepts that one needs to understand. And then the second one, we looked at a uh, type two kind of a question. Uh, basically, one will ask what is now type two and type three. Uh, type 3 is basically when you have a projectile that is being thrown vertically upwards and then passes the starting point and hits, hits the ground. So that is what we, we looked into. So now at type number 4, uh, we'll be looking at the bouncing ball. Let me get my pen. So at type number 4, we have now what we call a bouncing ball. So that will be type number, type number four. So the type number four, we have now bouncing ball. So with bouncing ball, we have different uh, balls that we, 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 we normally being exposed at. So it's either you have a soft ball, and then at times it's like uh, you have your, your hard balls. So I'm going to divide this uh, lesson into two, as, as in what is it that you need to do when you are working with a soft ball and when you are working with a hard ball. So I will start here to say uh, this will be now when we have the soft ball and then this side I will immediately add that now what happens if you have a hard ball can I assign maybe examples of that let's look now at a tennis ball in this case then a hard ball the one that we can consider it's your golf ball or maybe your cricket ball this will consider them as your your hard balls then let's allow them to be dropped from a certain height let's allow them to be dropped from a certain height such that our test or reasoning can be clear for 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 both of them so remember we said when we work with a projectile we are always expected now to have a form of a sketch a trajectory that we can uh, look into and refer to so i am going to have a situation where i say uh, this is my ball it's dropped to a certain height hits the ground and then bounces at a certain height so i must maybe have my line here to indicate it is hitting hitting the ground then let me remove this and then redraw it correctly so it hits the ground uh, it hits the ground and bounces off hits the ground and bounces off let's have the same here i will have my ball here that is dropped hit the ground and bounces off so let's have our ground here so this is our ground so can i assign the information that i already know here 100 percent. i know that if it is dropped then it says here v initial should be equals to zero meters per second but what do i know here we agreed that when we use our window that is the reason why we need this now when we use window window ex clearly explains that when a projectile is moving down the velocity increases so velocity increases as 
the object is moving down so what does that say it says here i'm going to have my v final as maxima maxi maxima i'm going to get it as maxi maxima so i can also do the same here i'll get my v final that is equals to now a uh, maxima then v initial here because it was also drop it will be zero meters per second so this is basically understanding what is happening here or what is it that i expect so i can easily assign my letters or alphabets that will be a then this will be b and then the top one will be c uh, so i have b some of this then here i have c then here i will have my b so i will have my a i will have my b then i will have my c so my c it is a point also which can be a maximum height after the first bounce so this will be maximum height after after the first bounce so i must also edit here that now we have a maximum height at that particular position but obviously at b there are a lot of things uh, happening at b so i'm going to highlight what happens at b at b we have now a newton third law being applied newton third law being applied why is it applied it is applied because now the object is exerting a force on the ground and the ground is exerting a force on on the ball and the same here we also have a newton third law that is now applicable as it hits the ground so what happens now to our velocity obviously our velocity is changing as it is moving from uh, a to b and then from b to c so from b to c we can, we can easily say that because now the projectile is moving up it means it is going to approach uh, the final velocity there of of zero remember we said if our projectile is moving down it says now the velocity increases but if it's moving up then uh, velocity decreases but while the, uh, that is being done it means now we don't have a conservation of uh, kinetic energy so kinetic energy will not be conserved in this case because energy is lost and the velocities now start changing as an indication that energy it's not conserved because what we want to understand is the kinetic energy should the total kinetic energy should be the same thereafter so in that part where we we, we spoke about collisions especially in impulse uh, this is where now you will be able to understand why we say it's that law and exactly what what happens thereafter so let me add and say for the very same soft ball uh, we have now increased contact time increased contact time now this is between the ball and the ground so one will ask why do we say now we have a, an increased contact time it is because now the soft ball soft ball is elastic elastic so what does 
this mean it means now we have increase in compression and as well as expansion so it takes time now to it compresses more with the wall and then the expansion rate also becomes somehow a uh, time so if that is the case then it means our soft ball is elastic and then we are going to have an increase in in contact time so this uh, will be clear when we do uh, graphs as to exactly what it does so what about now the hard ball hard ball obviously there's a decrease in contact time decrease in contact time so a decrease in contact time it basically says now our net force also acting on the object will be less so contact time decreases and then what does that mean it says now the reason for that is a uh, hard ball is rigid hard ball is rigid so if it's rigid it basically says it will hit the wall but now the amount of compression and expansion becomes becomes less so we should say here we also have decrease in compression and expansion. We have now that, that decrease. That is the reason why in most cases it will just hit the wall and fall and not come back to you. It's the issue of it being rigid and then this a uh, soft one being being elastic so it will it will it will assist in in us understanding exactly what we expect so let's uh, move further on i will need now to duplicate this page uh, so that we can extend our information as well so with us comparing softball and hardball it's basically for us to understand how our graphs are going to be like. So once we understand that, we can easily tell from the, the graph that a soft ball was used. We can easily tell from the graph that a, a rigid ball or a hard ball was, was now used. So I'm going to remove this because I want to draw graphs so let me just quickly remove all this and then keep the diagram there off so we are going to draw uh, position versus time for this situation so for position versus time so for position versus time as well as position versus time we will easily say this is my graph here or my axis and this is also my axis here so i know that it was starting at a certain height so it's starting at a certain height it hits the ground but now, because it's a soft ball, it will have this expansion, a compression and expansion that is going to increase the contact time. And then it will now bounce off and then hit a certain height there. But because this one is a hard ball, it will automatically bounce off now the, the, the ground uh, immediately. There isn't any increase in, in contact time. So it will start at a certain point, hit the ground, and then bounce off. Kindly check that now, after the bounce, it does not reach uh, the same height again. This is only because of uh, 
kinetic energy or the total kinetic energy not being conserved. It's not being conserved due to uh, velocities changing. So this part basically it addresses again the issue of the issue of uh, momentum or change in in momentum. So what basically happens is I still have my A. This part here will be my B, and then I will still have my C, which will be the maximum height. Do I still have my A? Yes, and then this will be B, and then this will be will be C. So it it the understanding that comes with the difference when you work with a softball and a hard ball. So both of them will bounce off the ground, yes, but now their graphs are not going to be to be the same. So this part here is the part that we say it will represent our our contact contact time. So we can apply now uh, principles of momentum and impulse when we are dealing with uh, the bouncing ball. So it basically says it is just a uh, integration of topic one which is momentum and now uh, vertical vertical project time so this will still be our contact time there but we don't have now that change in contact time it will happen uh, immediately because of the rigidity of of the ball so we still have now our contact time here as as well so this is your position versus time time graph so let's look into velocity versus time so when we look at velocity versus time let me create space again velocity versus time velocity versus time graph and then velocity versus time graph so with velocity versus time graph we agreed that Let me have my axis. I have my axis. So this will be my velocity. And then we know that because it was dropped, it must start at zero. It will start at zero. When it starts at zero, it will reach a maximum because we said it is increasing as it is approaching B. But at B, it is now going to hit the ground. So we'll have something of this nature. So to indicate that change in contact time, we'll also expand it here also on the graph. On the graph, and then we'll have this one. So depending on what is the value at which a velocity is changing with then we'll be able to start it somewhere here and say it will give us our final uh, velocity there so can i assign uh, my labels for me to understand it further yes i will be able to say this is a this is now b then this should be should be c why c because we did say now at c v final here should be equals to zero meters per second so this is the elasticity that i want us to understand hence we are going to have uh, differences in the graphs that are given so this will be now the change in in contact time that we can be able to use when we are working with a uh, momentum and and impulse so it is very important for one to understand what is it that they need 
to do because once you don't understand these basic principles of the bouncing ball automatically everything will fall off and then you'll not be able to do it the correct way then when we use a hard ball we are told also that it is starting at uh, zero because it was dropped so it will reach a certain maximum and then it will start now also to bounce off the wall and then depending on how much was the bounce then it will reach the final velocity as well but i want to emphasize again check this part here that it did not necessarily overlap like this one so we do have that change in in contact time but the change is not that much that we can be able to now to to consider it so hence it is always important to check which type of a ball i am working with so if it's a soft ball 100 percent then you will know that you are going to have this part of b here if it's a hard ball then we can say you are not going to have that much of change in time when you compare it with the softball the reasons for that were explained now in this uh, introduction so the introduction assists us in terms of clearly understanding the difference between between the two so the only thing that is left because i always want to have cohesion in everything that i do so i must be able to assign that this is a then this should be p and then this should be should be c so we will uh, be expected to draw graphs or if you are given a graph we should be able now to to interpret so this is velocity versus time time graph in seconds and this one in meters per, per second so we always have three graphs that we we look at so it will be position versus time and then velocity versus time so all this you should always be able still to you should be able also to interpret the graphs when you are given a graph what is it now that you are expected to to do so it's basically just checking and understanding which type of a problem am i faced with so we have a question here uh, it's question four and then it's specific that it talks about uh, the bouncing ball so a cricket ball of mass 5 kg is dropped from a height of a building so i have a mass of 5 kg and then the height of a building that is 7,06 meters above the ground it bounces off the ground and reaches a maximum height of 3,14 meters so i need to draw a sketch for this such that i can be able to understand all the information that is given so i am going to say this is my building and then this is the ground so it is starting at a and then it falls down and then it bounces off to a certain height so i am told that this height here of the building is something like 7,06 meters then i am told that after the bounce it could only reach 3,14 meters so can i assign my uh, letters again i can so i am looking at a and then this is b and then this is c so what kind of a ball am i working with i'm working with a cricket ball so already it says to me it should be a rigid ball or a hard ball so whatever i do uh, i should always put that uh, into into mind then what other information do i have i am told that it was dropped so if it was dropped then it means v initial here should be 
0 meters per, per second. Then we choose a direction that is now upward as, as positive. Then what can one do? Uh, we can basically analyze it further and say, I will know that my V final here at C will be zero. So I believe I have all the information that I need, then I can go into, into the question. So analyzing the question will give you a better understanding of what questions to expect. So the first question at 4.1, it says now calculate the velocity at which the ball hits, hits the ground. So it's basically the motion for B, C. Uh, sorry, A, B. So we can say now for 4.1, we are looking for the motion for, for A to B. Then what is it that I know? I am given that my V initial is zero meters per second. Do I have time taken? I don't know the time taken, but I know that from A to B, my delta Y should be equals to 7,06 meters. Do I have my G? Yes, I always have. It's 9.8 meters per second squared. Then my data is complete. Then I can go to my formula sheet and choose the correct equation. So V final squared is equals to V initial squared plus now 2G delta y so i am looking for v final squared because my choice of direction this will still remain zero plus now two and then delta y uh, or delta g it's negative 9.8 because our direction is upward as positive then i can just multiply this by 7 comma 06 so it must also be be negative because uh, the object is covering it in a downward uh, motion. Then my V final uh, will be something like 11,76 meters per second. And then the direction is downwards. Okay, it was negative, then it is downwards, 100%. So it's basically using the information that is given. Then at 4.2, the time taken by the ball to hit the ground. So me calculating uh, the time taken, we prefer to use uh, the information that is given, not what we calculated. Because if you work with what you calculated, if it happens that it is wrong, it means automatically the sub-questions or the questions that follow thereafter automatically becomes uh, wrong as well. So let's check if it's possible to work with the information that we have. So the time taken, it will also be uh, for A to, to B. So I know I have delta Y, which is equals to 7,06 meters. I have my V initial, which is equals to zero meters per second, but I am looking for T. Then I have my G, which is equals to 9.8 meters per second squared. So I am trying to avoid using the V final. There is a way of calculating it using V final, but I prefer now us working with uh, values or statement or information that was given to us by the examiner. So from this, I can easily say I have now delta Y, which is equals to VIT plus now half GT squared. That will give us something like minus, because it's more direction, and then zero multiplied by T, half now of minus 9.8 t squared and then this will fall off because everything multiplied by zero is zero then when you do your mathematics you find that t is equals to 1 comma 2 zero 
So t will be something like 1 comma 2 zero second. So we can easily say, oh, we are give calculated our final velocity as 11,76 meters per second. So the all part is me saying V final is equals to V initial plus GT. So V final is so towards downwards. So I have minus minus 11,6. 11,76 which is equals to 0 plus now minus 9,8 t let's write it uh, correctly so remove all this so I just have my v final as minus one eleven comma seven six which is equals to zero plus now minus nine point eight uh, t then when you do your math you'll find that it's equals to one comma two zero seconds as well so but the problem with my second option is what if your first answer for 4.1 is not correct so it means you'll be working throughout with everything that is incorrect so kindly check first if you are able to work it out with uh, your own the own your information given by 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 the examiner then it's fine you can go ahead with it but if somehow it becomes complex uh, then you can use your values that you calculated then by so doing then we know that uh, you are in in the right direction then at 4.3 calculate the velocity at which it leaves the ground after the first bounce so after the first bounce it means we basically need now to calculate the VF that it's now leaving the ground with. So that will be for the motion of BC. So I need to specify now I'm looking for BC. So me writing this honestly, it assists me in terms of knowing which data do I use or collect or which information do I have uh, for that. So it basically says, I want to know what is the V initial as it leaves a uh, point B. But I know that at C, the V final is equals to zero meters per second. Am I given time that it takes to reach C? I am not given. Do I know now the displacement or height covered as it bounces off the wall yes i am told that delta y is equals to 3 comma 1 4 meters then i have my constant which is g which is 9.8 meters per second squared then i can write down uh, my formula go to the formula sheet and then from the formula sheet i can choose uh, the most relevant equation thereof so i found that when i use vf squared is equals to vi squared plus 2g delta y i am able to substitute zero here and then v initial is what i'm looking for plus now 2 multiply by minus 9.8 multiply by 3 comma 4 so choice of a uh, direction remember now uh, the projectile or the cricket ball is moving up as it approaches c so our displacement is going to be positive then when you solve for vi you'll find that vi is something like 7.85 meters per second and then this is up upwards this is upwards then 4.4 .4. 
the time taken to reach the maximum height after the first bounce the time taken to reach the maximum height after the first bounce that is now 4.4 so with 4.4 i will say now i am still looking for b c so for my data basically all that is needed is i must just calculate a uh, time in this case so i'm going to use v f plus v i t plus v i plus uh, g t so this will be the easiest one to use like i said with projectile you always have so many options that you can you can use but always try to move for the easiest one you you can get so it will be vf is equals to vi plus gt for c i know my v final will be zero and then i just calculated my v initial it will be 7.85 and then plus minus 9.8 and then t then when i calculate for t i found that my t is 0 0.8 seconds my t is 0 0.8 seconds so if it's 0 0.8 seconds then i can move on and draw a graph of velocity versus versus time so they said i must draw here velocity versus versus time so me drawing velocity versus time uh, that is now for 4.5 i calculated everything that i need so i will just write velocity uh, versus time and then i will have my axis and then i was told that it was dropped so it is going to start at zero and then reach a maximum and then this maximum that was reached was 11,78 meters per second but how long did it take the ball to reach the ground it took the ball something like 1.2 seconds then it bounced off the wall with a velocity of uh, seven comma let me get the values correct seven comma eight five if now seven comma eight five then it went on and complete its journey to c and then it took now two seconds for that so this will be my time in seconds and then this will be my velocity in meters per second squared ah, per second sorry so that that is basically it when now working with the velocity versus time so this will be this will be your graph one could have just calculated the total uh, time taken for a ball to complete its motion but we break it down for 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 the purpose of understanding when or how can we tell that there was now uh, so much time taken to hit the ground and then the time taken to complete its its journey up then the final one they say here calculate uh, the net force at which the ball hits the ground so one will ask but how does now uh, one calculate a net force while busy with a topic under under vertical projectile because it is a bouncing ball we apply all the principles of uh, of projectile motion until it bounces so once it bounces it means we are going to have now a combination of what a combination of momentum and impulse as well as vertical projectile so explaining this in detail we'll say now let's consider it as a perfectly inelastic uh, collision because uh, we can easily tell that 
there is a change now in the velocities there. So some energy is lost. So we consider it as a perfectly inelastic. Maybe I should write it here such that you will be able to understand why we are doing all the calculations we are doing. So let's consider it now as perfectly inelastic. So perfectly inelastic, it just says the total uh, kinetic energy, it's not it's not conserved. So the total kinetic energy before is not the same, it's not equal to the total kinetic energy after. So we need the information that we, we calculated before. We need the information that uh, we needed to, to answer this particular question. What was nice about it is we're able to break it down in terms of sections A to B and then B to C. So we understand exactly what is it that was expected of us. Then calculating the net, net force, we'll need a, a data for that. So we can easily say, but as it hits the ground, from the graph, I can tell that my V initial here was 11,78 meters per second. But it left now the ground with 7,85 meters per second. So that I am able to, to get. And then my contact time here is now 1 comma 1 comma 2. So even if I will be given a graph, it will be easy for me to explain this in detail. So writing down my data, I will just say my V initial is equals to minus 11 comma 78 meters per second. And then my V final is moving up at 7 comma 85 meters now per second and then my mass is given also as 5 kg remember i was told that a cricket ball of mass 5 kg then i have my time which is just uh, 1,2 seconds then i can apply now uh, my equations that i used in momenta so i can easily say f net is equals to, okay, let's write it the right way. F net multiplied by changing T is equals to changing P. Then we know that F net multiplied by changing T is just M V final minus V initial. Then I can substitute my five and then my final velocity was a 7,85 .5, and then I'm going to have minus minus 11,78. Then my contact time was just 1,2 and then I still have my F net Then I should be able to do the mathematics and get my F net as 81,79 new newtons so there will be that incorporation of topics there will be that point where you are expected now to use concepts or principles from other topics for you to be able to to answer uh, certain questions so everything when you work with the bouncing ball remains the same as the projectiles that you know but once it hits the ground, it means there are possibilities of applying now momentum and impulse principles. So for me to you, thank you very much for your support and thank you for watching. Uh, kindly inform your friends about us, uh, share links, subscribe uh, and help uh, the person next to you somehow. So thank you very much. Let's meet on the next video.